Are you having thoughts of creating a sentiment analysis tool, a named entity recognition tool, or a document summarization solution? Well, in this video, I'll show you how you can use open source models using Gradient and create solutions with very few lines of Python code. So without wasting any further time, let's kickstart the video. Before I jump and show you the Python code in terms of how you can quickly start creating a sentiment analysis tool, a document summarization tool, or an entity extraction tool, I wanted to show you the interface of Gradient which allows you to achieve everything without any line of code. Isn't this amazing? So this what you see here on the screen is where you can play around with different use cases that you have and then based on whatever you feel is relevant you can kind of scale it for the bigger solution. So what I have right now is a document that I want to test out whether if this particular document or this particular piece of sentence has positive sentiment or negative sentiment. What I have also supplied here are 5 positive reviews and 5 negative reviews. The document states that my Apple Watch has completely changed my approach to fitness, tracking my steps, workout, etc. So this essentially is a positive review which I want the entire model to output. But for this to happen, I've also supplied 5 positive samples and 5 negative samples. So this is a clear case of few short learning. So here you can see there are 5 positive reviews that I have mentioned here for an Apple Watch. Similarly, I have 5 negative reviews here for the Apple Watch. So I've kind of given few short examples so that the model can learn and then give me the desired output. So now when I press submit, I'm expecting the output to be positive. Let's see what the output turns out to be. So here is the output. It says that the review that I've inputted is positive. So if you just take a step back and look at the bigger picture in terms of what we've been able to achieve, you will clearly find that we've been able to create a fairly accurate sentiment analysis solution by supplying some few short examples for our use case. Now I'll quickly show how you can implement this with minimal lines of Python code and I won't restrict myself only to the sentiment analysis part. I'll show you entity extraction as well as document summarization piece as well. So let's switch over to the coding aspect of the solution now. Now that we've looked at the UI implementation of gradient blocks and how you can implement a sentiment analysis tool with zero lines of code literally. I'll now show you how you can implement the same solution using Python. And trust me when I say this, the total number of lines of code will be very limited, okay? And all of this is using an open source model. So I'll quickly go forward and I'll show you the import and the install section. The first thing that I'll do is I'll install Gradient AI. If you already have Gradient AI, it's a good practice to upgrade it. So I'll quickly run this cell to install or upgrade Gradient AI. Now the installation is successful. Now the next piece is import. So I'll quickly import these particular libraries that I require for the entire execution. The other piece is what I've shown in my previous videos, which is for accessing Gradient's open source models. What you require is an access token and a workspace ID. All of this is something that I've already covered in my previous video. I'll add the link through which you can kind of create an account on Gradient if you haven't already and how you can quickly start accessing their models as well. So what you essentially require is an access token as well as a workspace ID, which is something that I've kept in my Google Collab secret session. So this is something that already exists here, which is what I'm utilizing. This is something that I'll import and save it into my OS environment variables. So I'll quickly run this cell. Now the next piece that I have to complete is I have to import Gradient from Gradient AI and I have to create an instance of the class Gradient and save it into a variable Gradient. So this is what I achieve using this piece of code. So I'll quickly run this cell as well. Now coming to the magic that all of you have been waiting for that is creating a sentiment analysis tool with minimal lines of code. So here is how you can create the entire sentiment analysis tool for your use case. So the first thing that you have to do is you have to import sentiment from Gradient AI. So I'll quickly run this cell. 
In the initial version of the video, I showed you that I had supplied five positive reviews on Apple Watch, which is what I supply in form of a list here. Then there are five negative reviews, which I have saved into a variable called as neg underscore reviews. So I'll quickly run these two cells. Now the review that I tested previously is what I'm using again. So if I show you the review as well, the review looks something like this. My Apple watch has completely changed my approach to fitness and so on and so forth. So this is a positive review that I want to test out with Gradient's open source models. What I create is I create a tuple by passing in this particular string. So I create a tuple called as document. So this is what I'll quickly execute. Now all the positive and negative examples that I've created, I create a list with the name examples. Every element in the list contains a key value pair. The first key value pair consists of the sentiment in terms of which example I'm kind of sharing. So for example, so the first negative review that I'm sharing, I save the value of the sentiment key as sentiment dot negative. And I save the document value, which is the actual review in the document value key. And the value of that will be negative review of zero. Similarly, I supply a positive review a negative review, again a positive review, negative review and so on and so forth. So here you can clearly see there are five positive reviews, five negative reviews and this is something that I supply as examples which will kind of work as few short examples for the model to learn in terms of what we want to achieve. Okay. So I'll quickly run this cell as well. Now what I want to test out is whether a document that I've created is positive or negative sentiment. What I currently have are five, five examples of positive and negative sentiment, which I supply here in form of the example list. And the sentence that I want to test out is present in form of this particular variable called as document. So I'll call the gradient dot analyze underscore sentiment function, pass in the sentence and pass in the examples that we've kind of generated. So I'll quickly run this cell. And here for the example that we have, I get the output as positive. So this, what you see here is what we've been able to create without knowing any complex NLP, without knowing the underhood model. What we've been able to create is an accurate sentiment analysis solution, which works on the examples that we provide. Isn't this amazing? Now with the magic of sentiment analysis out of our way, I'll show you how you can replicate the entire solution for different use cases, such as entity extraction and document summarization. So let's keep moving forward. Let me now unhide the cell for entity extraction. So the first thing that I do is I import the function extract param scheme value type from gradient AI. So that is something that I'll import. I have a simple sentence or a list of sentence or I have a paragraph with me. In the year 2001, Steve Jobs, the visionary behind the iconic Apple company, and then you have the entire paragraph, so to say. So here I want to extract multiple things in terms of the organization, in terms of say the product as well as fruit, etc. So all of this is what I want to extract through this particular paragraph. What I define here is a schema. So a schema contains a dictionary, which again contains key value pairs. So I want to extract company, product, food, year and person. So these are some of the entities that I want to extract from the paragraph. So what I define is I have a base level or I have the highest level keys wherein I want to extract specific properties. So that is what I have here inside those high level entities that I want to extract. I also define what the type of that entity will be. So company, product, food and person will be a string, but year will be a number, which is what I set using extract params schema value type. Okay. There may be a case where I'm very particular that I want a certain entity to be extracted by hook or crook, whether a particular entity is required true or false. So I've set true for company as well as food. Okay. Now I'll quickly run this. Now what I do is I call the function called as extract from the gradient library. I pass in the document. The document in our case is this particular paragraph that I've supplied. Now in this paragraph, I want to extract the company, the product, the food, year and person. So these are the things that I want to extract. 
Now, all of this information is provided by the schema variable that we have defined and I'll quickly run this cell. So here is the output of all the entities that have been extracted. So the company name is Apple. The food is Apple again. The person is Steve Jobs. The product is iPod and the year is 2001. So if I go back here, the company Apple comes in here, the fruit Apple comes in here. So it's able to understand the context really well in terms of where the food is and where the organization is. Isn't this amazing? Imagine you are new to this entire field and you want to quickly create a solution to extract named entities or entities from your paragraphs. All you've done is you've supplied what entities you are looking for and automatically the models are smart enough to give you the solution that you're looking for. Truly fabulous, right? So this is the second part of the solution that I wanted to take all of you through, which is the entity extraction using Gradient's open source LLMs. The third part is something that we use extensively, that is document summarization. So let's move to the document summarization part now. I have a small summary of the book Animal Farm in form of three paragraphs saved into a variable called as animal underscore farm. This is what I'll show you here using the pprint command. So this is a quick summary of the animal farm book. Okay. Now again, this summary is still big. I want to condense it even further. So what I do is I go forward. Firstly, I create a variable called as document, which is in form of a tuple that takes in this particular string variable. So I create the document variable first. Like before, what I've done is I've created a single shot example in this case, wherein I've supplied an initial document, which is historically Apple is unmatched in its ability, etc, etc. What I've also created is a small summary of the document above. So I'm giving the model a context in terms of how I envision the summary to be. Okay. This is where the example variable comes into picture. Okay. So I'll quickly run this. Again, just to reiterate, the example contains a document, which is the actual document as well as a sample summary of that document. So this will give the large language model a context in terms of how it has to create the summary for the inputted paragraphs. So now I go forward. Firstly, I import summarize params length function, and then I create a variable called as length wherein I specify that I want to summarize the entire document in the shortest form possible. This is something that I achieve using this piece of code. So there are multiple options. You can have a long summary, you can have a short summary and a medium summary as well. Okay. Now what I do next is I supply the document, which is the multiple paragraphs of the animal farm summary. I supply the example and I also supply the length. Now I'll quickly run this. The summary is ready and this is a summary of the document that we had shared. So Animal Farm by George Orwell recounts the story of farm animals rebelling against their human owner. So all of this is something that you can read forward. But again, the beauty of the solution is that we have used minimal lines of Python code. We are using an open source library to kind of create this entire solution and you don't need a heavy knowledge base in terms of creating this end to end solution. If you are excited looking at the solution, I highly recommend you to check out Gradient's open source models using which you can quickly start and create LLM based solutions for your use cases. So this is what I had in today's video. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you do like the content that I create on my channel, it would be super motivating if you can press the subscribe button and also press the bell icon to be notified for amazing videos that I create going forward as well. Thank you so much for watching the video.